Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to crochet the star and the actual nonagon, which is the centre for the pattern that you can see on the image of this video, okay? Um, so, um, so this is the star that I've been using, well, this is the actual star that I've been using in the um, for Shakespeare and the Voynich Manuscript and you can see there is a very, very, very slight difference. Um, that's just because this one's got sparkle. So this yarn is a little bit um, thicker, but it will make. Um, so when you're making whatever you're making, make sure that you try and use the sort of same sizes um, of the yarn, okay? Right, so for this one, what we're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is um, I like to leave the nice long tail end. You're going to need your tail ends for joining later on. I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook. So we're going to begin with a twist, and this needs to be a loose twist, don't do this tight, okay, and then do one, two, three chains. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work into this beginning chain, and in, so you need to keep it loose because we've got a lot of stitches to go in it. So we're doing the treble crochet stitch if you're in the UK, or it's the double crochet stitch if you're in the US. So yarn over, go into that first chain, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you've got one of those. Then you're going to do a chain of three. So that's one, two, three. And from now onwards, we're going to work in blocks of four. So you're going to make four stitches into that same space. There. Okay. And then once you've done your four blocks, you're going to do another chain of three, so that's one, two, three. Just pulling my yarn to get my tension. <clears throat> and then we're going to go back into this circle, the very beginning chain, and make four more of this same stitch in the same space. Okay, this is super easy um, and um, it's really nice and quick to make as well. So then one, two, three. So we're going in again, so you, this hole is getting bigger and bigger, which is perfectly fine, that's how it's supposed to be. If your hole stays small, you're really going to struggle to actually get all of your stitches in, because we need a total of 20 stitches in this circle, which is quite a lot, to be fair, but that's what the um, instructions were for the pattern, okay? And this pattern is one of the hidden patterns that I found in the Foyleaf manuscript while I've been translating or deciphering it, or whatever you want to call it, but definitely turning it into crochet patterns and to English. Okay, so I'm going to just do two more stitches there to make this next block of four. And then we're doing the chain of three, so that's one, two, three. And so we've actually got our four blocks of four, so we've got one, two, three, four. Now we're going to finish off this block, because this one's got two in it, so we're just going to do two more stitches, that's one and two and then you're going to slip stitch into, so there's this bit's fallen down so you're going to slip stitch or single crochet depending where you're from into that stitch there and then move into the chain three space to begin the next round, okay? So at this point you can still keep it open nice and um, that, that doesn't make any difference um, I actually have a bit of a problem right now, I've got a knot <laughs> in my yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to I'm going to need to move on to round two so let's see if I can get this one whoops get this knot out of the way there we go. So for each round from this time onwards you're going to do a chain of two you need to work three of the stitches because this chain is actually working as a stitch so this will make your first block of four and then you're going to do a chain of three Oh dear, that's terrible. It's because I'm coming to the end of my balls of my yarn and I'm trying to use up the last little bits. <clears throat> okay, so then we're going to work four more of these stitches into the same chain um, three space that we've just already worked the other ones. There. And there. And then you're going to do the same thing. So now what you're going to do is just work straight into the next chain space and you're just going to work... Um, a block of four of these stitches, do a chain of three, and then another block of four. Okay, and so that'll be how you complete round two. 
there. So I'm just going to just put that stitch into there. Um, whoops, a daisy. Right, so you're getting the gist of it. So we've got to go all the way around. So you're going to end up with your five points because it's a five pointed star. Once you've actually done round two, it'll look like that. I have pulled my tail end in now. What you have to do is sort of wiggle out like your stitches because it will actually sort of curve up a little bit when you actually try to pull this tail end in tight there. So we've started off, I've done my chain two, I've done my corner piece. And this is just to show those that don't know how to do it. So now we work into this space here and we work the four stitches just like we have been doing for the other ones. There, Ooh. and then you just move on to the corner and so, and what you do is you say, you just slip stitch into the top loop that tips over of each round and that'll be your final round. So you've actually, all you need to do is just make three rounds to be able to get this particular star and then say so you wiggle at it, you flatten it all down, you sew in your tail ends. If you want to, you can make two of these and then sandwich them together just by doing a slip stitch. You can do, so here I did, slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, just to get around the corner um, and so that you can actually do them like that. They do actually fit very nicely with the Christmas tree. Um, you could actually make them as a, an actual hanging that, you know, that I made earlier with the one with a little pocket. If you wanted to do that, and you obviously can do a smaller star. So you need to make nine of these stars in total. Okay, and then what you need to do is you need to make your centerpiece. So I'm just trying to get my other yarn, which I've just got some plain white yarn for this one which I've got them tangled up because I've got some sparkly and some plain. Right, so to be able to do the actual nonagon in the centre, still do the same thing, leave yourself a nice tail end. You're going to begin with a twist. You still start with a chain of three, so that's one, two, three. We're still using the exact same stitch. So what we're going to do is into the very first chain, we actually need to work eight of these stitches. So the chain will count as a stitch. So that's two three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now for this pattern, you, you slip stitch to join <clears throat> in between the posts. So that very first chain that you've done and that, po that stitch, you're going to go between there and slip stitch or single crochet to join. So you've got your little circle. Then you're going to do a chain of two and you that every round begins with a chain of two and then you work the um, treble crochet or double crochet stitch into the same space for that, just for that one stitch, just to make sure it fits all nice and neat. Then all, for the rest of this particular round, what you're going to do is do a stitch, chain one, and then do the stitch into the same space. So by the time you've got to the end of this round, you're going to have 18. So this is working in your nine times table. Um, so, and for those of you that don't know this trick, if you've got all of your digits on your hands, you can actually do the nine times table. So if you put your thumb in and you've got everything left over, that's nine. Then you bend this finger down and then this, your thumb would be then the tens and then these are the units. So that'll be 10 plus eight is 18. Then you bend this next one down, so that's 10, 20, 7, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72 and 81. Just for those that didn't know how to do that, just so you can keep count of your stitches if you're actually wanting to count your stitches. So for this one, you say you do the two stitches, so you're going to just keep doing all the way around for this round two is just a you stitch, chain one, and you stitch back into the same space. And when you get to the end of the round, you're going to slip stitch to join in between the posts. I've got one that I've been doing in purple that I've got all the way around, so you can see. So this has got the two stitches um, in each one. And so for this round, so what you do is you slip stitch into that space there, and then we're going to start the next round. I know this doesn't look like a perfect circle, because it doesn't, um, but so you chain two, and do the treble crochet stitch or the double crochet stitch in that space. Then you've got the gap between <clears throat> your next, because these bits are going to be your corners, but you've got a gap in between. So what you're going to do is yarn over and work in that gap. So you're just going to end up with one, and then you're going to go into the next one. So realistically, for this whole round, it's going to go two, one, two, one. Yep, so you keep doing that all the way around till you've ended up um, that you've completed that round, and that works 
and then when you get to the, the each round afterwards it's always going to be the same chain two and work a treble crochet stitch into that one and then you're going to work between these two posts and then do the two in there okay so you keep on going and you need to do that until your item that you've made is nine rounds all the way to the edge okay and then on each of the corners you're going to use so once you've sewed in all your tail ends from your stars you save those and what you do is you get them make the loops in each of the corners you're going to loop it like that just so you've got that loop there and then to join your actual stars to this nonagon in the middle you start off with two stars okay so and then what you're going to do is you get your tail ends so you've got your one tail end you're going to go through your actual star pick up your tail end and come back through there then you're going to go through the other stars so in the chain three corners there and you're going to then tie these together in a knot um, you want might want to just sit and pull your work just to make sure it's in the right place but there you go so you've got so you tie it in a knot and then what you do is you turn it over and you pull the tail ends through the opposite side if I just get these ones pull that through pull it through and I personally would tie on all of my stars first <laughs> before I did the tying on the back just so that you know so then what you so you're going to and then when you then go to add on your next star so you're going to put one side through there whoops a daisy and then you're going to get your next star and join on your next star and keep working like that okay I can't pick up that tail end now <laughs> so that's how you get all of those joined onto there and then what you do is you sew all your tail ends very carefully into the actual stars once you've got your stars all the way around the edge it's easier to be fair to then do it this way around you then get um, a tail end I've got my bunches of tail ends because I've saved all my tail ends because you've got two tail ends for each star and you're going to need all of those tail ends to join together so then what you do here is for this one you're going to go through the front and pull your one side of your tail end through and then pull that one through there and this one you just literally tie into a knot I'm just trying to make sure my tail ends roughly the same size you know for sewing in and then you do the same as what you did the other side is you pull these through to the back like that and then do an extra knot to keep that all safe and then you would sew in all of your tail ends now I'm not sewing in my tail ends because I want to show you how to join the actual edge now personally um, right let me just get um, I want a tail end of yarn to be able to try and join on that I've got let's show you with there we go this we've got this one there we go okay so what you'd then do is you're going to I personally would start at the corner but I want to show you how to do this section here so I'm just going to start here okay so you begin with a twist so you do your corner just like you would do the normal corner and then for these bits you're going to just work a bunch of four of your stitches so I'm just going to just do the chain of two just to count as that first stitch for this particular one and so you'd have your four stitches going along like that and then when you actually get ooh, I'm losing my tension then when you get to these places where you've joined your corners you're going to work two stitches in one side like that and then you're going to work two stitches in the opposite side this will then create you a new block of four in the middle for the next round okay so when you actually go to do so you obviously then keep working into that stitch there let me just do that one just so I can just show you what I mean for because the, the next round is sometimes where you can actually make, have an accident so you just got to be careful um, of what you're where you're doing your stitches oh I've split my arm there I'm going to undo all of that anyway so the following round that I'm going to do afterwards you're going to work this side of it so you do your four there and then do your four there don't go into the middle because then this will join those so that that becomes a nicer stitch so if I show you the one that I've already finished here 
well, I say I've finished it, I've got to. <laughs> so as you actually add on the edge, you start so you can see how, let's just get a, a star. Let's use the yellow one so you can see. So you can see how this is the edge that you're going to be creating and it goes more and more pointed as you do it. So when it starts to hide your actual stars, but it gives you obviously the beautiful effect of the finish. This particular pattern I was mentioning in Shakespeare um, and I was on about how all of the stitches when you add up these, so in each one of these um, stars there's 60 stitches. If you actually just add on three rounds to this one, so this is the corner, see, and then we've got one, two, three. If you actually then wanted to count from here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that becomes the ninth round. And across your top here, you can see you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. So as you then keep on going afterwards, the next round is going to be 10 and 11, etc. And if you, when you get to the 15th round, which would be 15 from this point upwards, which technically would be the ninth round from here to here, um, you actually end up, that whole round creates 540 stitches, which is exactly the same as the actual stars. So that was just another link that I was just sharing with all my things together. Um, so that's how you do that. So this is the actual, so this is where I've got to so far. Um, I've noticed as I start to get bigger with it, it is starting to get, you do have to smooth it to make it go flat. It's, it naturally wants to curve up in slight paces, but it is beautiful. Um, and just because somebody was, I got asked a question about the scale. So when I've actually been doing these things to do with the bell gauge. Yeah, so I've got the bell gauge there, which I've drawn there. And then I've got a bigger version, which I've done there. So I've scaled it up. And I've just got the letter E just to show you. So if I was to use the small bell with this big E, it would be very difficult to see the E through the actual windows, whereas there it fits perfectly. And obviously if I scale it up, that E can see, be seen through the window, but that one can as well very clearly. But um, that was the difference of that. So yes, the answer is that if you used a bigger hook and a bigger yarn, the scale of everything that I did for my Shakespeare's videos wouldn't work. Everything has to be perfectly in scale. Um, but to make it work the way that they've done, because if you had started off with a bigger text and a bigger hook, yeah, um, and bigger holes to start off with, and then over time shrunk things down, it would still work to scale. And I just wanted to share as well that if you wanted to make sure that all of your pieces we're in the right places to start off with, what you'd actually do is you'd, so let's just do this symbol that's inside the manuscript there. Um, I know it's not very good inside there, but just so you've got the gist of it and I'll just do a different symbol there. So you'd make, so they'd fit and they leave like that. So to make it then look like a sentence, you could just then add on little bits there, leave a gap, then just put an O and a whatever else that you wanted to put afterwards. And you could form it like that. So yeah, so this is all to do with the Voynich Manuscript and Shakespeare. Um, like I said, so that's how to crochet the stars and the nonagons. And um, yep, yeah, so there you go. That was just my little bit that I wanted to share. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. And um, happy crochet, anybody, everybody. And just one more time, I used a four millimeter crochet hook. And the yarn is just double knit yarn. So where's my other label? So it just, and it always says on it, these ones, the ones that I buy, it says on it to use with a four millimetre crochet hook. So, um, but some of them are slightly thicker than others. Okay, so I think I've covered every, everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. Bye for now.